Yo, what's poppin'? It's the Hyphenit, and welcome to the Doubt Me Content Studio. It's my new studio that I just finished building out primarily to create content, whether it's photo shoots, video shoots, podcasting. This place is ready for me to just go ham. So let me give you guys a tour. Let's first start off with this area here. This is a 12 foot by 12 foot area. We have a black backdrop and we have a brick backdrop. Now this is not a psych wall. This is actually just a fabric. So you might be able to see some of the wrinkles here. And then we have just a black rug on the floor. However, when we are shooting a subject here and we have the lighting properly done here, we can actually make this just look like infinite black space. So you won't see any of those wrinkles. Now on this side, we have a 12 foot wide brick wall. Now this is a little bit more reddish, a little bit more saturated, which I think actually has a nice pop on camera. And then up on the top, you can see we have these two Nanlite PavaTube 6C lights. Now these are battery powered and they can be controlled via an app. So I can pretty much change those colors to whatever I want, which allows me to really kind of give that background whatever color cast I want. Another great thing about those is that they are magnetic and I can pretty much put it anywhere on any part of this studio. Now I have various lights and we can pretty much put whatever lighting setup we want here. But the primary light that we use the most is this here, Aperture LS60X bicolor light. And as you can see here, I do have it on this Neewer C stand with caster so I can easily roll it around. Now the light itself is very flexible, very versatile, but for the modifier that we use the most, this lantern here made by iFootage. Now it is a Bowens mount, so sometimes I'll change this if I want a more concentrated source. We'll put an iFootage softbox, or on occasion, we'll actually take off the modifier completely because with this light, it does have a flood mode or a spot mode that allows me to make a very narrow spotlight. And this is actually a really awesome feature. Now I do have other lights and other modifiers from for nows to actual projection mounts that can create this, but having one built in on this light is actually really cool. All right, so that's this area here. There's a lot of flexibility here. Now, before we go into the little hangout area, let's go to this white wall here. Now on each end, I do have Nanlite Pavel tubes, which are these tube lights that are not only CCT, but also RGB. So I can change the color of the backdrop to pretty much whatever I want. Now this is a smaller area. We generally shoot here knee up but you have a lot of flexibility within that space. Again, the background can change to any color I want. Right now I have this yellow blue for one of my tech channel videos. And then right here I have some presets. Let's go ahead and turn it red. Being able to control these lights via an app and pretty much just have this whatever color we want is awesome. Now here I have a rolling desk, which I use a lot for my tech videos. And then here on this desk, what I have, what we use sometimes is this iFootage monopod. It's a small version that's made for the desks. And I have a phone mount here. Now this is when we're creating a lot of simple content for social media, just with our phone. But if we ever want to shoot more professionally here, we just move this out the way, put a tripod or gimbal, et cetera, and just shoot in this direction. I do have a key light up here as well that gives me my main light. And here I have the Nanlite 60B, which is a bicolor light. And I do have an iFootage softbox here with a grid. Now this does help concentrate the light to a more narrow beam. Now I like this here because I don't want a lot of spill on that white wall, especially when we're using different colors. Now usually in this background, I keep more lights ready as well as some monopods made by iFootage. Pretty much all my tripods, monopods, everything is iFootage because they are incredible which leads me to my podcast area. Now, all my cameras are Sony. I love Sony. I shoot with the a7S III, the a7 IV, various Sony cameras. But the tripods that we use for the cameras, we have the iFootage TC7 with the Komodo K7. This is a beefy monster. This can handle a lot of weight, a very big payload. Now, this is something that I take around with me on other productions when I need something to be able to have a really big rig on it. But for the podcast, that's normally there. And then on this side, I have a smaller one. This is the TA5, pretty lightweight, pretty small, but very comfortable for pretty much any mirrorless camera. And I do have the K5S fluid head here. And I do have these awesome C stars. This is a quick release system. I have this pretty much on almost all my gear from tripods to monopods, my slider, etc. So I can easily put my fluid heads on different gear. For the podcast, we are using 85 millimeter f1.8 lenses. Those have a very shallow depth of field and they are very tight. So it allows me to really pop against the background as well as for the guest. Now, as you can see, the podcast studio is set up for two people. Now I have myself on the left and then here on the right is whoever the guest is. If you guys haven't already checked it out, check out the Dami podcast. 
comes out pretty much every week, sometimes every two weeks, but mostly every week. And we have a lot of really fascinating guests. But enough about that. Let's get back to the studio here. For the main light, I have the iFootage Anglerfish 60DN. This is a daylight only light, and it's honestly the most color accurate light on the market. I love using this for the podcast because having very color accurate skin tones is important to me. Now here, the modifier that I use is the Nanlite Lantern 80. This is a fairly large lantern. I prefer having a little bit more of a larger source for the podcast because it's two of us. Now here you can see on the sides of the desk, I do have some RLX acoustic panels and they're on stands. These are really great. Not only do they help with the sound, but they also look really dope. And the way I have them set up here and I have these RGB lights on the sides allows me to actually give this very nice background when the cameras are pointing at us, which ends up making us pop a lot more when we have these very tight shots on our podcast. Now these are some smaller RGB lights. These are bicolor, but also RGB. These are the GVM 850D. They work really well. And at 100% power, they provide pretty much the light that I need just for that area. Now, when it comes to the audio, we're using the Rodecaster Pro 2. This is hands down my favorite audio interface slash recorder on the market. Not only can it be used for podcasting, but so many different applications. And I actually have made a lot of videos about it. I love this thing. So I'm using this as built-in processing so I can have a compressor, a lot of different effects here to kind of already kind of make the sound sound really good before I even put it into any editing program. For our microphones, we are using the Rode Procaster microphones with the shock mount that's designed for this microphone. Not only does it look really dope, but it also does help reduce handling noise. So any movement, things like that, it's not gonna pick up any vibration sound. And then now both microphones are on the Rode PSA boom arm, which is one of my favorite boom arms on the market. Doesn't sag, holds really well. I love these. And then here in the back, this is the bump box. It's a huge, loud boom box that not only can play music in here very loud, but also we use this when we like to do karaoke when I have low hangouts. So that's pretty much the majority of the content area. Again, the black wall, the brick, podcast, white wall. But here we also have a little hangout area, which has been used as a living room scene for a music video. Sometimes we shoot other little things here, but mostly this is the hangout. All right, so here we have some couches, a giant beanbag chair. Those are made by Love Sack, very comfortable. Then I have this older recliner that I've just had here for years. Here leading in, I have a lot of little decorative things that I like. One of them being the office sign, which I love the show The Office, love playing basketball. We have this little basketball hoop here. Michael Myers from Halloween, love that. Always reminds me to kill it. One of my favorite things here is my replica, authentic WWE championship belt from the Attitude Era. A few little decorations here, some games. Sometimes we play some games. I have a TV here with a sound bar and play Super Smash Bros or Mario Kart. I have my PS5 in another studio, but in this studio, it's mostly just like the funner games that are more multiplayer based. Got some Marvel comic stuff, got some skateboards. Shout out to Oscar Loretto Jr., one of the homies. That's pretty much the Doubt Me content studio. Took a little while to put this together, but I'm very happy with the end result. It's been very useful for me and the people that I work with. We're constantly in here just making content. If you guys are interested in any of the gear that I talked about, I do have a lot of videos on the Doubt Me Tech YouTube channel where I break down the gear, do reviews, tutorials, etc. So make sure to check that out. And if you guys haven't already, check out the other platforms I got. I really appreciate you guys watching this. I'm so excited. I'm going to go and hang out, play some Super Smash Bros with the homie Omari that's right behind the camera, hopefully. Please make sure to drop a like on this video, drop a comment below if you have any questions, and please make sure to subscribe. I have a lot more videos coming soon. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.